Cody Shaw, welcome to the clan. A new opportunity, a brand new adventure in a new country. How much are you keen to come to Scotland and get started? Yeah, I'm really excited. You know, it's I've been playing in uh, this league for nine years in, in America, and I think it's time for me to to go elsewhere and try uh, Europe out. And I think Scotland's a good spot. I you know uh, coach was really interested in me, and uh, was definitely go where they want you, not where you want to go. And um, I'm excited for the opportunity, and I'm excited to check check out the new culture and everything about that too. So, I am. It's a little I don't say nerve wracking, but at the same point, it's it's exciting to cross the pond for once and go play some hockey. Good. So tell us a bit about yourself and what we can expect from you uh, as we look ahead to the new season. Uh, I'm a big, big boy, uh, six foot six, um, around 235, 240 pounds. You know, I played uh, junior hockey in the OHL and then uh, I was drafted to the Atlanta Thrashers in 2009 and then they were moved over to the Winnipeg Jets. So I was in that system for two years, I played pro and then I played um, a few years, five years in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And then a year in Cincinnati, then two years in, in Florida. So a lot of years in this league, but a, a big player. I know I have I can shoot the puck well, and I have a big shot. I like to use my slap shot a lot. And also, my, also my, if you look at my, my stats, uh, there's a lot of penalty minutes on there too. So I had some years where there's a lot of penalty minutes, but some years not so much. But yeah, I definitely have been fighting in the past, and it's part of my game. But also the game is, is changing. It's getting more more skilled, more fast. But I think uh, I've adapted to it, and I'm – I'm enjoying my role as a, as a leader and as a, as a big body and have a, pr- a presence out there for the team. And we'll talk about the fact you're no stranger to a penalty box in just a minute, but I'm curious to know why the timing is right now for you to, to come to Scotland at this stage in your career. You know, just I was getting to the point where I had some some buddies that went over there and they say they love just just the opportunity to play hockey for a living and then now to to cross the pond and, and enjoy different cultures and just to meet different people and and see see the rest of the world rather than just being here in, in Canada and America. And, you know, there's a lot of beautiful places here too. But to have that opportunity to to play hockey and to travel as well is just it's something that you couldn't pass up. And I think it's at night at the point of my career, and I wanted to I want to do that before my career is over. And I got I got a few solid years left in me, but I just I think it's now is the time for me to to play overseas and enjoy that part of it. Now, as you've already alluded to, you've got quite a lot of penalty minutes on there. I've seen a few clips of you on YouTube already and doing some research before I spoke to you. And, you know, with that reaction, you're the kind of player who gets the crowd on their feet. What kind of a buzz do you get from the crowd when you find yourself in that situation? Uh, it's definitely, there's uh, almost a little bit, I'd say nervousness before the fight, but it just, obviously, it's still, it's still you're in a fight, but it becomes natural the more you do it. And it is, it gets, it's an adrenaline rush, you know, in, in the summers, I don't get that. You, you play and you skate around and you do your training and stuff in the summer, but then playing in front of the crowd, it's, it's like a lot of playing guys play. It's, I heard the Glasgow has great fans and they have really lots of, a lot of bodies in the, in the seats too. So that that's, makes it more fun too. Just the adrenaline rush you get from, from those fights and, and then just more or less just sticking up for my teammates. You know, I've, I grew up as a, as a protector and just being able to stick up for my teammates and do my job. And I, and I love that part of it too, you know, because it's not an easy job, but someone's always willing to do it. And then I feel like I'm the guy that can do that sometimes for the boys. You mentioned it's a part of the game that's kind of dying out a little bit now as, as, as years go on. Is there a certain intelligence needed to know when the timing is right to get yourself in that situation if something, you know, something happens in the game that calls for it? Uh, yeah, for sure. You know, uh, the stage fighting is definitely one of the things that has gotten out of the game and, which is, I don't, for me, it's just, it's an opinion that people want to have. And that's fine for me. I think that hockey as a whole and fighting needs to stay in it for sure. And I think the state's fighting, it can go into the wayside, but sticking up for teammates and it just protects, it protects all players. And, you know, the big boys that want to fight will do it, but having some guys on the ice just allows the smaller players to be protected some from someone hitting them the wrong way. And I think it just adds a little sense of security for the game. And I think, that's why the fighter will never leave the game of hockey. And I think it's also, I think the fans love it too. They come come watch a, a hockey game and just a, the chance of a fight might break it out too. And it just, it's enjoyable. I know for some reason people love it. And I think everyone around the world loves just a sense of a little bit of violence in, in our life sometimes. But, you know, it's still, still protecting each other. And I think yeah, that part of, the, of hockey will never be put to the wayside. Now, as you've said, you're six foot six, 235, 240 pounds. 
do you find that being that size maybe gets you out of those situations quickly as well? I'm talking about if something happens in a game and suddenly an opponent looks around, sees you standing next to him and thinks, no, no, better not in this case. <laughs> yeah, you I'll be honest, I'm worried about spilling your drink, never mind getting into a fight with you. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, I keep all I keep all my fighting on, on the ice and part of my game that way. But yeah, definitely the, the size factor helps into um, how what kind of player I am. And sometimes people could put, Go to the wayside, but I've been I've been crossing past some big boys too. So it's a, it's a two way street, you know. And I think there's a lot of respect between guys that do fight, and I think it's part of the game that everyone doesn't maybe not know knows as well. But I think the the big boys know that there's a lot of respect that goes behind all the fighting, and but it's still we they know the job for it is it's definitely part of the hockey. Is the one that stands out for you? Is there a, is there a particular scrap that that is memorable to you for whatever reason? Uh, if, not really for sure scrap, but it was just funny last year. I was in Cincinnati and I ended up fighting, um, a guy, Kyle Newber, and then got a few weeks later, got tried to trade it to Florida. And then this, during the season, we were, were roommates all year. So it just, uh, it's a small world and we went from fighting each other to being roommates. So I think just, is just a comical story that how that all turned out. <laughs> Good stuff. So talking about your move to Glasgow, what have you learned about Glasgow and the city? And what will you be coming to do while you're over here away from the ice? I've done a lot of research. I heard it's uh, very got lots of music and a very good art scene. You know, I think there's a lot of a lot of culture from Malcolm said there's a few there's a few pubs and stuff that I heard there's some good spots. It just there's all the history there. You know, I've been I've been in Canada and America for my whole life and you, there's history here, but it just it's a different kind of history. I'm just excited to check out the culture and check out the people. You know, I lived in and like, well, the the accents will be something I need to get, get used to, and I think it'll be a fun for me. And I lived in Newfoundland for half a year, and they, it's the the Newfie accent there. So, but I'm sure it's a, a bit heavier over in Scotland. But I'm I'm down to uh, to learn a little bit about that and, and see how people live in just different parts of the world. And I'm excited that Scotland's the place I landed. And of course, now that you've signed for the club, you'll know the players that, that's coming into the team. Hockey's a small world. You'll know of the guys. You'll have played against them. You'll know them through other people as well. What have you made of the team the coach is assembling from what you've seen? Uh, it's, a, it's a good crew. You know, he's, he's got some young talent that's come out of, the, out of college. And then he's also got some, some older veteran players that I played against my few my first few years in, in the East Coast Hockey League. And some like Yellowhorn and, and, and Matthew Wall, like the guys like that, just established players. And I think he's picked up some veteran players and to have a good leadership group to, to bring this team and and with the young guys coming in the pro for the first few years too it just sometimes you need that you need the leadership of the locker room just to show the ropes and i think that we the team that we have assembled is, is we got some grit we got some size we also got a lot of skill too you know i just like how we said the the game is changing and um you can't just fight your way all the time but you need to have guys that can put pucks in the back of the net because that's really you don't win you don't win with fights you just still have to score some goals to win so i think it's definitely what we're, we're building a team for that, and I'm uh, happy with the team we've built so far. And you'll probably be aware this will probably this will be the first season we've had in this country since the pandemic, of course, it wreaked havoc all over the world. What was it like playing in Florida during such a, a strange time? Yeah, it was just, it was it was different, you know. With the we were in the little bubbles and the mass in the locker room and to do the typical things outside the rink was just mostly just we had to golf every once in a while just because it was, it was Florida, so that was nice. But it was just a lot of time with the, with the teammates. You know, we didn't really have much could do go to the at the apartment to hang out with each other. So it's a lot of a lot of time with each other. So we we bonded quite well. But just it was we were fortunate to play. You know, half the league didn't play here, and a lot of leagues around the world didn't really get to play as many games, or if not even a season like they did in the, in the UK. So very fortunate I was able to play. But it was it was a lot of games and a lot of days, and it just it definitely took a toll on a lot of the players. But I think. Uh, I think now that I think a few less games come over to Europe, and I think that's definitely uh, added bonus for me too. It's being an older guy, but I love the game, and I think to be able to play during the times like that. And Florida was it was a different place to play, and it's it was the weather was nice, but it was a different different COVID rules down there for sure. So what's your impression of the coach then? He comes across as a, as a very positive guy, he says the right things, and he's certainly excited to be coming here. Is that the impression you got of him as well? Yeah, for sure. You know, I talked to him a few times on the phone, and he's, and he's honest. He's not gonna, he's not gonna put stuff under the rug. He's not gonna hide things from you. That's what he told me. I said I, I've been coaching a long time, and really, honesty gets you a long ways in life. You know, sometimes honesty, people don't want to hear it right away. But you know, just he's he's told me straight up how how things are gonna work and the kind of player I am and the role I'm gonna play on the team. And he's he's watched me before coaching Wichita, so he knows he knows what I'm bringing. He said there's no 
there's nothing hidden between us and between him and what we're we're both expected to bring to the table. And I think uh, that's he's an honest he's an honest coach. And yeah, there's a lot of a lot of positivity in what he talks about. I know he's you can say hear it in his voice too. He's excited about getting the season going. He's excited about the players that we're signing. So you know, to have excitement and a buzz around uh, the team and especially coming from the coaches is a good sign before the season starts. Okay, well, as I speak to you, we're in August. Our season doesn't start until November, although the other teams start in September, just with one thing or another. So what's the plan for the next couple of months then until you, you get over here and can finally get started? I'll continue to train in um, a local gym here I go to and skating with a, a lot of top-end talents, a lot of NHL guys. So continue to skate with them and train with them until they leave in September. And then there's still a group of guys in the lower ranking pro ranks here. They Obviously, all the, a lot of European guys left, so... And then I um, I do some part time uh, work with my dad painting and some and some carpentry with my buddy. So just you know keeping keeping the bank account full until the play the hockey season again. But and also a lot of golf and just hanging with the fam family and friends. You know, as a hockey player, you're, you're gone for usually eight to nine months of the season. You're home for the summers and you make all the friendships growing up and you have a tight bond with a lot of family and friends. So coming back, you try and make all the stops while you can and before you uh, head out of town again. Good stuff. A couple of questions left. One is we want to find out a fun fact about you, something not a lot of people know that you do or you've done um, in your in your life. So tell us, what's your fun fact? A fun fact about me? Uh, not really. Maybe it's a sad fact, but I had, growing up, I had really, really bad ears and and uh, I had tubes on my ears three times. So it wasn't until I was uh, 20, 24 years old, 25 years old, when I went underwater for the first time in my life and really enjoyed it. I got, I got custom earplugs made and it's more like it was just a cool experience for me just to be able to do that. You know, it's a little fun fact, but also a little 25 is finally going underwater. But I think it's just it's just funny how that story went. And, and to be able to now I'm going cliff jumping and stuff like that in the summer and here in the Muskokas in Ontario, there's a lot of cool spots for us to do that. So I enjoy being outdoors and, and camping and stuff. So finding out these custom earplugs really helped me be truly the outdoorsman kind of person I like to be. Interesting. Okay. So finally, let's finish then. I want to hear a message from you to the Purple Army. The fans will be watching. They'll be keen to know more about you. So what, have you, what message have you got for them as we finish this up? I ask this to them that uh, I've uh, been on winning teams before and uh, the winning culture is something that you do to embed in that locker room. And I'm, I'm coming over there to win. And I'm coming over there to, to play hockey and play, be ready for those fans. And they, when the fans, they pay for a ticket to come watch us play. So they want to they want to see us win. They want to see us entertain them, and that's what we're we're going to do. We're going to be a good team to watch, a fun team to watch, and we're coming over here with the with the plan to to win a championship. Brilliant way to end it, Cody Saul. Thank you so much for your time. Great to meet you, and like everybody else, I can't wait to to meet you in person when you get over here in October. Yeah. And thank you. Thanks, thanks, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be over there. No, it's hopefully it was sooner than than later, but you know we'll, we'll be there shortly before we know, it, and then we'll be playing some hockey. And I can't wait. <laughs>